Welcome to the message of the Bible GPS. Now this week is Holy Week. Friday is Good Friday and Sunday is Easter Sunday. And today is considered as Palm Sunday. But I would like to focus on one word that we get in the Bible that really describes the mood of Jesus at one specific moment. And that is a word that I think we can all relate to. But before we go into focus on that one word, let us just bow our heads in prayer. Thank you, God, for this day and for the beauty of the day that we can embrace it. Thank you, Lord, that we can focus on this week about your amazing love for us, that we are the focus of your love. I pray, Lord, that you will open our hearts and our minds so that your word can take root deep down, so that we can be transformed to be the people you want us to be. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I would like to read that passage for us. It was the time just after Jesus had his Lord's or his last supper with his disciples. And it is from Matthew chapter 26, and I'm going to read for you from 36. It says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled, because Jesus realized the next day he's going to die the most, most excruciating, humiliating death. So he be, started to become sorrowful and troubled. And then in the next verse, verse 38, Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow, to the point of death, stay here and keep watch with me. And you probably noticed that one word that we can all relate to. It is the word overwhelmed. Jesus said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow. Now, it's just amazing that Jesus, to whom all authority belongs, could have that strong feeling, feeling of being overwhelmed. And I think that we all can relate to circumstances in our lives where we felt overwhelmed. And when you feel overwhelmed, it is actually a symptom of anxiety. And this is what Jesus felt, you know, he realized the next day is going to be an extremely painful, hurtful day. And when we feel overwhelmed with life, you, get, you have that moment, you know, you just feel this is just too much. And then a feeling of anxiety overwhelms me, you. And so many people can relate to that. And today I want to be a little bit more personal and also share a little bit of the overwhelming feelings that I have felt the last few years. Especially the last seven years is in my work as a pastor in the church in Calgary. I was just overwhelmed with the challenges there. We started an amazing journey, journey to revitalize the church. And then I've experienced some opposition and then it became worse and worse. And it became overwhelming that you just felt that, you know, as soon as you want to move forward with the congregation, some people just step on the brakes. And in subtle ways, people were starting work to work behind my back and try to make things difficult for me. And I didn't even realize it at that moment. And to make a very long story short, I did at one Thursday morning, I was so overwhelmed that I got my very first anxiety attack, anxiety attack ever in my life. I didn't know what was going on with me that morning. I felt I am going to die. And the paramedics came and they were just amazing. And they told me it was an anxiety attack. And then I realized, you know, it is your body telling you that you had enough you need to take good care of yourselves and to make a long story short um, I later moved on from that position as a pastor in that church and it had such a huge impact in my family that my marriage came to an end as well and it was just one overwhelming experience after the other and sometimes you just don't know what to do when you feel overwhelmed you don't see always hope it's dark and you don't know always who you can trust. You feel isolated, you feel exhausted, and many times you feel lonely. 
But when you read this passage, you realize that you're actually not alone. Jesus felt that overwhelming feeling. There was Moses. God said to Moses, Moses, you're going to lead my people out of Egypt. And then Moses said, but who am I? I cannot speak well. So he felt overwhelmed. And then the prophet Elijah felt overwhelmed. He almost wanted to commit suicide. So the Bible is full of people who had moments of where they felt overwhelmed with life. It is just one big wave that you see and then you feel, you know what, you cannot ride this wave of life that is taking you to places that you've never thought that you have, <laughs> that you could go to. So what do you do when you feel overwhelmed? Well, Jesus did two major things here. Number one, Jesus prayed to his father. And I think when you pray, you don't need to pray many words. If you go to the Psalms, more than 50% of the Psalms are Psalms of lament, where the, the author, especially David, you know, he would come to God and just lament. Because lament is the first step out of the doubts of despair. The, fir the very first step. You need to tell God exactly how you feel. And then you will experience a peace that will, will surpass all understanding. You will experience God's grace. So prayer is very, very important. I've experienced that, you know, there were times that I, I just didn't know what to pray. Then I know that the Holy Spirit intercedes for you, as the Bible says, with words that you cannot even express. So God have you covered. If you don't know how to pray, God's Spirit will pray for you. But prayer brings you to that connection with God and then you started to get perspective then you realize it actually could have been worse and this is where you experience your hope in darkness because it is where you have lost your hope in darkness and in darkness God does do his best work because in that tomb when Jesus died and he was buried God did the most amazing miracle he his son was raised from the dead that's the beautiful message of Easter. And I remember one day when I talked to one of my mental friends about my situation of being overwhelmed with so many aspects of life. My friend just listened and then he said, Kobus, out of your death, there will be a resurrection. And I thought that is the best advice someone could have ever given me. Out of your death, that's Good Friday, there will be a resurrection. That's Easter Sunday. So there's always hope. This is what prayer does, you know, out of your death, there will be a resurrection. And then the second thing that Jesus did besides prayer, he had his, he was surrounded by his friends, by his disciples. Don't do the journey of life alone, especially when you're going through tough times. It's good to make yourself vulnerable. Jesus made himself vulnerable with his disciples. He said, stay with me. I'm going to pray, you know, don't leave me alone. And I must say, without friends, I would not have made it through my journey where I felt so many times overwhelmed. So in this day of Easter, or this week of Easter, I think just focus on the two things, the best advice anyone can give you. Out of your death, there will be a resurrection. You just got to believe that. Pray about it. Surround yourself with good friends. And during my difficult times, there was one thing that my counsel always pointed me to. Let your faith be bigger than your fear. Because when you feel overwhelmed, that's just another way to be so fearful. You, have, you are so driven by fear and then fear you need to realize can stand for two things fear can stand for forget everything and run or face everything and rise and with the help of god's um, spirit when you pray and with the right friends you surround yourself you can face everything and rise well today i also feel overwhelmed but with different but with a different reason, because God is able to change a mess into a message. And I remember that my counselor always motivated me and said, oh, yes, there is this life, you know, just go through it. And today is a wonderful day for me. God has brought someone new in my life. So today 
I'm overwhelmed with love, with surrounded by great friends. And in about um, four hours, I will say I do to an amazing woman that God has brought into my life, only by God's grace. So today I'm overwhelmed for good reasons. So wherever you are, trust God. God is faithful. Let's pray. God, we want to thank you for your amazing love. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, that you are there for us, and that wherever we are, we can realize out of our death, there will be a resurrection. Because you are faithful. You take us through our circumstances to new places, to new heights, because you want to give us life in abundance. We thank you for that, Lord. Amen. So wherever you are, God has placed you. And God has a purpose for you being there. And wherever you go, God is sending you into a world where people are so desperate for hope. There are so many people who are overwhelmed. So many people cannot sleep at night. But their Facebook postings will not reflect that. But just be there for people. So wherever you go, be alert. Listen to understand and become a co-traveler for someone in need. God bless you.